either. One thing you're supposed to appreciate, ladies and gentlemen, here is that capital is what, yeah, capital is very scarce. There is nobody who has a, a lot of money. At the end of the day, whatever capital resources we have, they are very scarce, and as such, they need to be planned for optimally. They need to be planned for optimally. So we are saying here, very importantly, that capital, capital, capital in this case here is scarce. That is what we are told in financial management of section three of foundations level, not foundations but intermediate, that capital is scarce. But as much as capital is scarce, we have in this case here, projects, projects in this case, we shall be having projects whose, whose, whose requirements, whose requirements, whose requirements far exceed, whose requirements exceed the capital available, the capital available, the capital available. We have so many projects, ladies and gentlemen, for example, like now myself here, assuming I've got 2 million Kenya shillings, in front of my eyes, I have very many projects that uh, if I try adding their requirements, they'll exceed the 2 million. For example, I would want to do a very good house in Isinya. I have uh, some interest in Isinya, Kajado County. Right? I would want to do a few things in this case here from where I come from. I mean, there are so many computing projects that I need lots of resources which exceed what here the capital available. All right. So we are saying, ladies and gentlemen, that we have, say, capital. We have capital. We have capital of 2 million. But the projects that we have, the projects that we have run from here to team two, ABC. So for example, project A needs 1.5 million. Project B, for example, needs 0.5 million. We have project C, for example, needing 1.8 million. If you add everything here, if you add everything here, then you will end up getting 3.8 million as the capital required. This is the capital required, capital required, capital required vis-a-vis -vis capital available, capital available of how much? Of 2 million, of 2 million, capital available of 2 million. Let me give you some story. And this is something that really sometime back embarrassed me so much, embarrassed me so much. So I went one day with my son and daughter to a supermarket. During those days when Nakuma was Nakuma, when they were telling us that if you need it, we've got it. So remember at the end of the month, what used to happen at the end of the month, what used to happen, all of us would go to Nakuma. You take those big trolleys that you can even use to carry your kid, although my kids were a bit uh, bigger. But then we used to go around, we pick things, we pick things, we pick things, we pick. So we picked so many things. All right. So then we went straight away to the cashier. So the cashier was there trying to put in those things in that uh, machine, counting, 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 counting. Then, of course, the final tally was there. You need 41,000. And in my pocket, I only had 20,000. All right. So, of course, I would not have had any much issues. If I did not have kids, I would have told this lady that I've forgotten a few things. Let me first of all pull my cut away and then I'll come back, cancel that transaction, I'll come back later, and then I would have organized myself. But now here we have a young son. I try in this case, ladies and gentlemen, as much as possible here to show everybody, and there were people who were queuing behind me that everybody was fine, but the young man was crying that we cannot return this. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is what we shall be doing in capital budgeting. If the capital that you have is not enough, then you must return a few things back to the shelves. And this is the major thing that I would want to bring to you today, that if this that is required is more than what is available, then there are projects that you will not be able to undertake. But you decide, for example, and say, hey, I don't want A. I don't, no, no, no. There is what we call capital budgeting techniques. How do we plan and say it is A or B or C that we shall be going for and, of course, leave the others behind? 
So we have got various capital budgeting techniques and one of the biggest model that you must understand at this level is what we call net present value. So in short, whenever you have got projects whose capital requirement is more than the capital available, then you must compute their value contributions to the company. You must compute what we call the net present what year, the net present value of each product, of each project. And of course, your guess is as good as mine. Any project whose uh, NPV will be negative, for example, in this case, it will be put down, put out. Ladies and gentlemen, as a capital budgeting uh, technique, we shall be discussing with you here what we call the profitability index, profitability index. We shall be looking at the IRR, internal rate of return. If I pause there a little bit and ask you guys, these three capital budgeting techniques that I've just mentioned, ah, is there anybody who is able to remember them? NPV, profitability index, we have IRR. Is there anybody who is able to remember them from your previous studies? That the capital we have is not enough. And therefore, we must do what we call project appraisal using net present value, using IRR, using, in this case here, profitability index. We will not be able to go to things like payback period here, really, no. But are those techniques that somebody here has ever heard? They are not talking to me, or rather, maybe the comments in this case here could be hidden somewhere here. Somewhere here. Anybody who has ever heard of them? I'm not asking whether you know how to compute them. <laughs> God says, yes, Roger Miller is a truthful man. Saumu, great. Roger Miller is saying, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, I may have forgotten this because I was exempted a long time ago. And then we have, in this case, yeah, they're not new to us. They're not new to us. I know. Somebody like Lucy Ongayo, because I know her very well, she may have done financial management, say like how many years ago? Eight years ago. She's even much better. She's a bit younger. There must be somebody who did financial management here yeah, 15 years ago. There must be somebody, ladies and gentlemen, who in this particular case, there must be somebody in this particular case, ladies and gentlemen, who did, who did, who did not do FM. Perhaps they were done what year they were exact. Exempted. They were exempted. And that is why, ladies and gentlemen, I would want to take this opportunity to start, not like what the syllabus tells us. You know, the syllabus tells us you go ahead and start applying those models in the past paper that assume previous knowledge. I'm not going to assume any previous knowledge. I would want to start from scratch. I show you how we discount first before I start looking at these things, and I would want you to basically ignore everything that I've introduced here, ignore everything that I've spoken about here, and then you mention for us there discounting techniques. Mention for me there discounting techniques. Discounting. Discounting techniques. This is the title now. Discounting techniques that we did some time back which we forgot, and Mualimu would want to take a few minutes to remind all of us. Yeah, like Mary Kuria, great. Great. Okay, great. Discounting techniques, discounting techniques, discounting techniques. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you're supposed to know about uh, discounting techniques these are also known as, these are also known as present valuation, present valuation techniques. They are also known as, aka stands for also known as, these are also known as present valuation techniques, present valuation techniques. They are basically used, they are used. They are used, they are used, they are used to ascertain, to ascertain, to ascertain 
present values present values of future cash flows they are used to ascertain present values of future cash flows they are used to ascertain present values of future you discount you know if for example in future somebody promises to give me a million shillings right i should be able to get that a million shillings from the future to today it's today's equivalent value will be less the difference between a million and assuming today's value this amount is worth nine hundred thousand. that difference is the discount so discount means a reduced amount so you're taking the future value we apply some percentage on it and then we get what we call a present value so the process of moving from future valuation to present valuation is what we call discounting discounting now for us to be able to appreciate what mwalimu is talking about tonight i would want us to make reference that uh, there are two types of cash flows 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 so we have this cash flows number one we have what we call irregular and then number two we have what we call regular regular or uniform or what most of you in those old days when you were in the university you used to call annuity thank you very much silas yes so we have got two types of our cash flows we have irregular that as silas is telling us there also known as what here somebody lump sums lump sum amount irregular lump sum amount and then we have the regular stroke uniform stroke annuities now ladies and gentlemen for discounting purposes irregular use pvf for discounting use pvf for discounting for the annuity use pvf for discounting use pvf for discounting so irregular you use in this case here pvf for discounting and for the annuity you use a PVF. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. When we talk of PVF, this is present value interest factor. Present value interest factor. PVF is what we call the one that we normally use to discount annuities. This is what we call present value interest factor interest factor of an annuity interest factor of an annuity and i would want to stop a little bit there to have you guys writing your notes very well and once you finish taking down the notes could you kindly put a thumbs up kindly put a thumbs up once you finish taking your notes please put a thumbs up a thumbs up a thumbs up this put a thumbs up great so like i can see from uh jk yoko thumbs up george has not yet finished george has not yet finished because i can see a very angry face Catherine has finished george is it possible for you to ask a question if you have a question pv far this is pv5 my handwriting is not very good pv far is present value interest factor of an annuity of an annuity and then pv for loan the one for discounting irregular is what we call present value interest factor present value interest factor present value interest factor now ladies and gentlemen please listen because uh, we have kipto kipto is putting finger down like this is there something kipto you haven't written is it possible for you to ask a question kipto please don't fear your father i'm your father i'm your father you can fear your mother but never fear you. You must be very free with your father. Yeah, you can even screenshot. Thank you very much. 
I can see somebody in this case here telling me that uh, Molimo, you're cheating us, especially on a Mother's Day. If you're saying like that for sure, they don't know the role of a, a father in this society. This is a person that you should be very close with. <laughs> I wish you were not, uh, I wish you weren't uh, doing a DM. Don't put your messages private, no. Put your messages there where everybody can see them <laughs> for good discussions. Thank you so much. So then what is interesting that for me, ladies and gentlemen, is to teach you guys, like how do we get this PV? What is the formula of PV? So what is the formula of PV? The formula of PV is like this. The formula of PV is like this. To get PV, we shall be taking one plus R raised to negative N. To get PV, PV, it is one plus the return raised to negative N. This is so important, PV. One plus R raised to negative N. And then to get V far, ladies and gentlemen, to get present value interest factor of an annuity, we normally take one minus this short formula, one minus one plus R raised to negative N, and then everything to be divided by R. Please write your R better. This is just as a result of poor handwriting. I would have wanted this R and this R to be the same. But I normally comfort myself with what uh, some teacher told me some time back in high school when he realized that I could not improve in handwriting at all. He told me that uh, bright people have poor handwritings. Just comforting myself, you know. Great, great, great. So is there somebody who has mastered uh, I mean, how to write that? For? I'll be telling you what N stands for. I'll be telling you what R stands for. But mastery of the... Formula, is there somebody who has been able to master? If, for example, I was to hide these formulas like this and then ask you guys to write PV formula and PV for, is there somebody who has really mastered how to write them? Is there somebody who has mastered how to write them down? Thank you so much. So tell us there that uh, R, R stands for the required, the required rate of return. The required rate of return, which will also be known as cost of capital which will be known as cost of who? Cost of capital. Which will be known as cost of capital. Cost of capital, shall be abbreviating this in section five. We will not be calling it cost of capital. In this advanced level, we shall be calling this one here the famous cork. Cork. Cork stands for cost of who? Cost of capital. And then of course, N stands for time. E.g. in years, in months, ETC. Time, time. Example. So mention there, example, example, example. So we have a, a business here, a business here, a business here belonging to Catherine. So we have in this case here, Catherine uh, Limited, cash flows, Catherine Limited. Catherine. Limited cash flows are given as follows: C year one, year two in millions, in millions, in millions. She has just begun some business here. So this is years, and then we have year cash flows. So year one should get twelve million. Year two should get fifteen million. Year three should get eighteen million. So business money. I don't expect her to start buying a very big car, business money. You buy a big car, then your business will not be available to celebrate its fifth birthday. And then they have given us the famous cork. So the cork here is 10%. So we are required to determine, to determine, to determine the total, the total present value. Determine the total present value of her cash flows. Cork stands for cost of capital. Cost of capital is the same as what here somebody return. The return. So the first thing that I'll have to ask myself, ladies and gentlemen, 
the first thing I'll have to ask myself, ladies and gentlemen, the cash flow that we have here from Catherine Limited's company, what type of cash flows are these? Are they regular? You know, if they were to be regular, they would be like coming to us, 10 million in year one, 10 million in year two, 10 million in year three. No, they are irregular. And if they are irregular because they are changing between the interest, then to discount them, I will come and use what we call PVs. I will use what we call PVs. And the PV formula when you're doing one plus R raised to negative N, which will be the same as 1.1 raised to negative N. So 1.1, I'm so sure you haven't seen where I got 1.1 from. I'm 100% I can bet. I can bet with you. You guys haven't seen where I got the 1.1 from. I can bet with you on this. I'm so sure you haven't seen where I got 1.1 from. Is there anybody who has seen where I got 1.1 from? This must be a figure that came from somewhere. Of course, not from Shakahola. Sauma has already seen where we got the 1.1 from because it is 1 plus R and the R here is the same as 0 0.1. The R is the same as 0 0.1. And therefore, 1 plus R, this will be the same as 1 plus 0 0.1, which will be 1.1. Thank you very much, Leshamta. So then the first one, abracadabra, will be 1.1 raised to negative 1 because it's year 1. You give me an answer, and I've seen somebody really, somebody very nice is already giving me an answer. Somebody very nice is already giving me an answer there. Remember, as we shall be seeing later on, is that you can read these figures from some tables. Eh? Although I want us to assume, you told me, Mualimu, let us start scratching this thing from the very beginning. So I'm assuming that you don't even know how to read tables. So I'm, I'm, I'm laying the foundation now. I'm laying the foundation now. So I expect you guys to take your calculators and then you say 1.1 raised to negative one. Lucy Wagura, she's giving me 0.991. 0.991. So here, because of time two, I'll talk of 1.1 raised to negative two. 1.1 raised to negative two. I can already see Silas has given me something, 0 0.8264. 0 0.8264, and then 1.3 raised to negative three. 1.1 raised to negative three, because of the third year, the third year, the third year, the third year. How I wish it was everybody who was giving me an answer. How I wish it was everybody giving me an answer. How I wish it was everybody giving me an answer. I have in this case here from Barak Odoro, 7513. 7513. And once I get this, I know, you know, it's cash flow, discounting factor. This is called discounting factor. So I know I will come and create a column here called discounted cash flow. So you have to write this in full because you're getting this for the very first time. So you create a column there called discounted cash flow. So discounted cash flow, we are taking the cash flow that we have multiplying them with the discounting factors. As in you take these times this will be equal to this. So like you take 12, you discount it by multiplying this. So you say 12 times 0.1991, what are we getting somebody? My calculator jammed will replace, we shall overcome. Don't replace it. Perhaps it's only the battery. Don't waste resources. Tomorrow, visit, for example, most of these supermarkets they sell batteries. For about 100 shillings, you should be able to get that thing replaced and it will be able to serve you. So we have Anderson, my friend, 101992. 101992. And then we take here 15 times this figure, 15 times this figure, the second one now, the second one now, the second one now. 15 times 0.8264. What are we getting there? <laughs> 12.396. So we have here 12.396. Thank you so much. Go to year number three. Year number three. Year number three, it is 18 times 0.75, 13. I'm so happy now because people have really woken up. Now everybody's giving me a figure. They're giving me 13.5234. 13.5234. 13 now that these cash flows are discounted, now we can come and add them up. 
please order them up. Discount the cash flows, please add all of them up. You add them, and then whatever you get is what we shall call the total present value. Total present value is what we shall call the total present value. You add them, the discounted. Please write this in full. It's called discounted cash flow. So in this case, we are getting 36.8286. 36 86. Thank you so much. That is wonderful. I love this. I love this. I love this. This is wonderful. 36.82. We are not going to make any decision because we haven't uh, got a net present value. But I simply wanted to use this little example to show you guys how to compute total present value or total discounted cash flow. So example number two, Ben Masai. Now this is Ben Masai, Masai limited cash flow. So Ben Masai has basically, as a company, he has bought government bonds. He has bought government bonds. Government bond, which is a four-year bond. So we have the year, year one, year two, year three, year four, and then we have cash flow. So year one, Masai will get a, 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 a. Because government bonds, they yield the same amount of cash flows every year. Every year. Uniform. So ladies and gentlemen, they have given us the cork. Cork is 10%. And then we are required to discount and determine the total present value of Maasai Limited's cash flows. So required, give us the total present value. Give us the total present value. Now, what type of cash flows do we have here? Did you guys buy? What type of cash flows do we have here really? What type of cash flows do we have here? There are annuities, isn't it? There are annuities, and I would want to give you exactly five minutes you try regular yes. You try this question. We see how far you'll go with it. Try, try it. I can see others are giving me 66. Don't is giving me 74 now. You see, at first, I may even decide to take these figures as if they are independent, as if they're irregular. That's an assumption. I'm just assuming. So now I'm going to treat these amounts as if they're what your lumps is. And they use the normal discounting formula because this normal discounting formula is the one that uh, was discovered a long time ago. It, it, it used. They used it for so long before discovering the annuity. So assuming now to go this through the long way and they treat this as if they're irregular, come and compute what we call PV. So PV, I'll still use 1.1 raised to negative n. PV, I'll use 1.1 raised to negative n. All right. So it means that we have, I will come on top of 1.1 raised to negative 1, 1.1 raised to negative 2, 1.1 raised to negative 3, 1.1 raised to negative 4. So then could you kindly give us these figures, ladies and gentlemen? Please give us these figures very fast, assuming that they are irregular. Assuming that they are irregular. So the first one, I'm so much aware it is for 1991, the first one. Please give me the rest. Give me the rest. I don't want to be labor. Give me the rest. Uh -huh. According to Saumo, it is for 82, 82, 64. Thank you so much. So we go to year number three. We go to year number three. It is 75, 13. It is 75, 13. It is 75, 13. It is 68, 13. It is 68, 13. So I'm come and give me the discount. Part. Give me the discount. Part. So discounted cash flows, now we are multiplying. The first cash flow is this. Give me your answer, preferably 
in four decimal places. Give me your answers. Give me your answer, preferably in four decimal places. So we have George giving me 7.2728. He took eight times the PVF. Go for the second one. Go for the second one. Thank you very much, Lucy Wagura. All students who are trying to give us figures here are great students, are nice students. They are nice students. They are nice students. So we have 6.61, 6.112. George, 6.6112, we able to confirm. So third year now, Sailor also confirmed. The third year, we are thinking that A times 0.7512, third year. According to Kyoko, is 6104. Thank you so much. So the last one, A times 0.6830. The last one, the last one, eight times point six eight two zero. What we have, according to Vincent, it's 54, 64, 54, 64, 0, that's my word. So please come and add to me. Give me the total, the total, present value. It is exactly equal to what you guys got. Please give me the first place. Twenty five. Twenty five points. Three five. Is there anybody using the other formula who could have gotten this answer? Anybody use the other formula and got this answer? Yes. So the question that uh, basically begs for our attention uh, is that why did people refuse this simplified formula? And they decided working it out to get another now formula that is able to consolidate everything and prop. It's because of this. Masai limited cash flows, for example, if there were 50 year cash flows, if there were 50 year cash flows, then this method really becomes what you come back, even 10, discounting 20 years using this method. So this method is limited simply because it is uh, quite uh, laborious to use it especially when the number of years uh, which are uh, in question are too many. Otherwise, I can decide to make use of it. Now listen and listen to me very well. So method number two, method number two, method number two, method number two, method number two. So according to method number two, now this is where we use the annuities approach. Method of two is where we use the annuities approach. So the annuities approach, ladies and gentlemen, then what do we have here under annuities approach? We shall come and remind ourselves, remember the PV formula. PV formula is one plus R raised to negative N. How about PV part? So PV part will be one minus this plus one plus R raised to negative N. And then you divide everything by what year by R. And you choose approach with this method I'm after. So, first of all, come and give me the PV part. So, PV part will be 1 minus 1.1 raised to this 888 was uh, available to uh, Maasai, Maasai Limited, Maasai Limited for four years. So, then this will be raised to negative four. And then whatever we shall get, we shall come and divide this by 0.1. Where do I get 1.1 from? It's because the cost of capital 
is 10%. It's the same as 0.1. So 1 plus 0.1 is the same as 1.1. So then if you move slowly and tell us there 1 minus 1.1 raised to negative 4, you say equals first. And then you say divide by 0.1. Could you kind of advise us really, kind of advise us really, what figure are we getting here for PV far? What figure are we getting here for PV far? What figure are we getting? The final figure. According to some, according to yeah, so many guys who have given me this figure, 3.16, 999, like that. Thank you so much. And therefore, and therefore, the total present value. Therefore, the total present value. I'll only take the NEP figure just once. Don't tell me take eight times eight. No, no, it's only once. Because you are trying to avoid that thing of what year eight, eight of them coming, like say 50 times. You take it only one annual figure times this PV part. So it will be A times 3.1699. So is there somebody who can give me this figure that you confirm whether this figure is the same as the one that you guys got? Anybody who is able to confirm this, and then we get to check really whether, whether, whether we got it right. So Barak gives me 25 point, 25 point, 25 point, 25 point three, five, eight, nine. We may not get exactly the same answer with what we got, but whatever we're getting here should be very close to the other one that we got using a longer approach. Can't see anybody who's excited. Can't see anybody who's excited. Saying, you reckon I've learned something, I've learned something. Or somebody who has a question and see really. Remember, if you've got any concerns, any complaints, you're not able to understand that perhaps I'm too fast, don't hesitate to put your concerns down. Directly. Directly. Concerns. So I would want to pause a little bit. So, uh -huh. Do not do for year one. No, 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 no. You see, if you you start doing like for year one, year two, year, then it will not really make sense why these guys came up with a simplified formula. What if those cash flows were like eight of them? They came up with this simplified formula for an annuity because of that repetitiveness, but they can only take one figure, that repetitive figure, only one, and then you multiply it with what you with what we call PV power. I hope I'm clear. Boy. On the, no problem, Lucy, I'll be able to show you how to raise. So for example, you see, if you look at your calculator, first of all, you'll be able to see a function written raised. Could be written like this. You see, just check there. Check there, quite close to on. Either written like this or written x raised to r. Let me see whether you are able to see it. First of all, you see that button. That button, that button. Be able to see it. And even somebody can make it uh, quite easy even for me by taking a screenshot of your calculator and then you circle that thing. And then you send the photo on WhatsApp. That's what I've always seen people do. A student who has that, I wish I had mine here. You simply take a screenshot and then you circle. And then you send it through our WhatsApp to be able to pick it. Many, many differences. This is advanced. This is advanced. Lucy cannot see. What type of a calculator does she have in really, Lucy? We shall overcome. Lucy, are you able to share? Just take a screenshot of your calculator and then send it to WhatsApp if you don't mind. I hope you're in our group, Lucy. I hope you're in our group, Lucy. I hope you're in our group, Lucy. Just take a, a photo of your calculator. Take a photo of your calculator. And then you send it here in FMD. 
And as you do that, George is also trying to tell you something that there is a sign there. Very good. You see where we have log. Are you able to see log, Lucy? Are you able to see log or x squared? Just above there. Just above there. Just above there. Just above there, Lucy. Yes, so this one here, this is the wrist, this one. I hope you are able to see. This one here is the wrist. Near logarithm, near logarithm, the wrist is here. The wrist is there. I hope now you are able to see it. Thank you very much. I can see somebody. Yes, yes. Great, great, great. So then if you want to raise, say, for example, two, if you want to raise, say, for example, to raise to negative part, that's what exactly you do. So the come and say yeah, two, two, raise to negative, two raise to, raise to, and then you press negative part. You want to get those answers. You can now try with whatever here. Like now one minus 1.1 1 .1 raised to negative four equals. First of all, you say equals. Whatever you get, you say divided by 0.1. And then you see whether you'll be able to get this thing and you'll see. Let's try that. See whether you'll be able to get that figure. So you say 1 minus 1.1. Then that's a function of raise to negative 4. Raise to negative 4. And you say equals. Why don't you say equals? Whatever you get, they will divide by 0.1. And then I'll leave you now to do practical. I, I wish you could just get this one for me. That would be very important. Got it, great. Now from there, I now give you the power to go and use uh, that uh, power later on nicely in getting all the other figures. In getting all the other figures. Great, and I'll also take this opportunity to thank the students who contribute and they are to do everything. very good thing. Thank you so much. Great. Now, if you don't mind, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be able to answer the student who has asked about the difference between this advanced capital budgeting and the capital budgeting or intermediate level, FM of intermediate level. You know, FM of intermediate level was uh, quite a child's play. Now children play soft soft games. Right. This one at the past has got so many things, so many things. But the good thing is that they're going to love them. The moment you at least have these uh, basics, you're going to love, you're going to love this advanced capital budgeting and advanced financial management as a paper. So if you allow me, then I'll be able to look at Silas. So Silas, I love this is exciting. XIC Silas Limited expect to receive expects to receive Kenya shilling three million per annum in perpetuity in perpetuity the cost of capital is ten percent the cost of capital is ten percent and then we are required then we are required. And then we are required, we are required here to come and determine the total, determine the total present value of Silas's or Silas Limited's cash rebates. So you can see the concept of perpetual. Perpetual is the same as infinity. Perpetual is the same as infinity. Perpetuity is the same as infinity. Perpetuity is the same as infinity. So I want to give you like three minutes to attempt this. Three minutes to attempt this. It will be very important. 
we may need to attend to this. It could be very important to me to see whether you're able to get it right. You guys are witnesses. Thank you so much. Let me just take this opportunity to remind all of us how we are supposed to get this total present value. So to get the total present value, to get the total present value, present value, I will take the three million, all right? I'm gonna multiply this with EV far, but now when N is in equity, PV far when n is it where PV far is because this is a permanent thing, it's an entity, it's going to be constant throughout. And then I'll come and remind myself very fast that to get PV far, to get PV far, it is one minus one plus r raised negative n, everything divided by r. But now remember, we don't have n, or rather n is infinity. n is infinity, and if n is infinity, if n is infinity in this field, we found means that PV star, PV star, when n is infinity, will it be one over what here? Somebody will be one over r. So, and if I come back here, this will be the same as three times one over r, which is the same as three over r. And the R is 10%. That is how those things work. So we're going to start again. And we are learning something very, very important. We are learning something very, very important. We are saying that the present value, when M is in infinity, you'll be taking amount divided by R. Amount divided by R. If I were you, I would have highlighted this thing. If I were you, I would have highlighted this thing. And if possible, highlight it with a yellow highlighter. Yellow, yellow brings things out very nicely. Very nicely. Yellow highlighter. Present value when n is infinity. You simply don't have to go through the steps that you're going through. When they talk of n being infinity, then you take the amount, you divide it by what here, somebody, you divide it by r. You take the amount and then you divide by what here somebody you divide by r divided by r which is 10 percent so i don't know whether we are together are we together really up to here are we together really up to here are we together really up to here I don't think so. If it's Silas only is saying that we are together, then there must be a problem somewhere. There must be a problem somewhere. There must be a problem somewhere. Oh, Kyoko is saying I'm breaking, I'm breaking. Am I breaking for everybody or it's Kyoko's internet? It would be very bad to give you bad experience. Oh, I'm okay. okay. It's Kyoko's internet. Kyoko is your internet. Kyoko work on internet. Kyoko, if possible, please don't be using like uh, Airtel. Mm -hmm. The only internet that I'm so proud of is Safaricom. Any other internet is Monoko. It's useless. It's useless. Uh, Vincent says, thank you very much, Vincent. Explain how you can solve that. This one plus R, rate to negative infinity, no problem. That I can be able to, that I can be able to explain. Now, listen, if for example, you have here 1.1, raised to negative one. Remind me this figure, Vincent. What is 1.1 raised to negative one? Please remind me this figure. 1.1 raised to negative one. Remind me this figure. Vincent, I hope you're able to see that for 991. Thank you very much. Now, remember, as n approaches infinity, it means n is increasing. So, if n, for example, was to be 10, 
So then what is 1.1 raised to the negative 10? What is 1.1 raised to the negative 10 now? Try this. What is 1.1 raised to the negative 10? Try. I think it's 0 point. So I want us to increase the end. We increase the end. We increase the end. We increase the end. Vincent is saying 0.3855. What if now our n is 100? So 1.1 raised to the negative 100. That will start being 0, 0.0. Let's try this. We're learning something very nice there. We're learning something very nice here. We're learning something very nice here. We're learning something very nice here. 0 0.00, you can see. We try the last one. How about 1.1 raised to the negative 1,000? This now is even something you can't even write like down. So what you're saying is that uh, as n increases, this entire number approaches zero. This entire number approaches zero. Actually, the best for you, you guys are not supposed to be big mathematicians, no. You're not supposed to be very big mathematicians, no. For me, the way I was taught in this thing, I was told like this. I was told like this. If, for example, we have here the formula, if is one minus one plus r, and then we talk of what a negative infinity all over r, and then we say that this is infinity. This infinity means that the entire term here cannot be defined. This entire term cannot be and uh, cannot be defined. So this entire term will disappear. So that now pv bar, pv bar, pv bar, when n is an infinity, becomes what here, somebody one over r, becomes one over r. pv bar, when n is infinity, becomes one over r. This one is one over r, because this cannot be defined. Cannot be defined. Cannot be defined. So Vincent, have answered your question? Or do you want us to go into a lot of mathematics? In really? As here, we are doing applied maths. We are applying what these guys. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And this formula is so important to us. If there is any formula that we want you guys to master, is this formula of PV far? Is this formula of PV far when n is an infinity? When n is an infinity, this formula is a very important formula to us is a very important formula to us. Because later on, I'll be telling you that uh, uh, Silas says uh, figures will be growing, right? That the three million will be growing by a certain percent, percentage, like this. I'll come and tell you later on, I can even take it to an exercise. I can expand the Silas, Silas, the limited cash flows. Are three million per annum, uh, and the N is in infinity. But now we have a growth rate of 2% per annum. Growth rate of 2% per annum. And then they have given you R as 10%. And then we are required, we are required to determine, determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. So is there somebody who can really be able to do this? Determine the total present value. Is there anybody who can do this? Thing? Determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. Silas limited stack flows are trillion dollars. But N has not been given. N is in infinity. But these cash flows will be growing at 2% per annum. R, which is our cost of capital, is 10%. R, which is our cost of capital, is 10%. Lucy says, Mualimo, please do it. Do it. Do it. Remember, when it is infinity, the present value will be equal to the amount given, the amount given over R. But now this time round, we have a growth rate. And you are told, when there is a growth rate, you will come and increase the amount here with the, this growth rate. Right? And then you subtract what here? You subtract G from the denominator. You must have learned this already. Present value in situations where 
n is in infinity and there is a growth rate. And there is a growth rate. So if I move slowly, huh, the amount given is in into one plus growth rate of 0 0.02. One plus growth rate of 0 0.03 all over r, r which is 0 0.1 minus the growth rate of 0 0.02. So then could you kindly just move slowly? If I were you, I would first of all get the numerator. Is there somebody who can give me the numerator here? Is there somebody who can give me the numerator here three times? 1.02. Three times 1.02. What are we getting here? Three times 1.02. What are we getting here? All over this minus this. 0 0.1 minus 0 0.02, 0 0.1 minus 0 0.02 will give us what we get. 0 0.02. So then finally, what figure are we going to get finally? 3.06 divided by 0 0.08, what figures are we get finally here? So according to Silas, we are, we are getting 38.25. That's according to Silas, according to Angeshi, 38.25. And this is a very important formula that I would want us. This, this is the bedrock of finance. This formula. This formula is the bedrock of finance, present value. It is the bedrock of finance. When you have a growth rate, when N is in perpetuity, and then you happen to be having a growth rate. You happen to be having a growth rate. You happen to be having a gross rate. You happen to be having a gross rate. You happen to be having a gross rate. This formula is very important because later on, I'll be blocking this, especially when I go to the advanced financing division. When I go to the advanced financing division, I'll be able to blow this to something called dividend valuation. Dividend valuation. Where we shall say, P O equals B O into one plus G over K E minus G. Provincial officer equals district officer like regarding as Sandua, who grew, who grew, so has to grow. I don't know whether he reached here. I think he must have just passed this position to deputy president. He did very, very well. So in this case here, we have B O who has to grow in rank, get to whatever, whatever become a PO all over Kenya without government. All over Kenya without government. These are very important formula, which is basically emanating out of this, which is basically emanating out of this. So we shall be seeing that BO, the value organization, BO stands for the current dividends. Then we have G is the growth rate. We have this one that we call in cost of equity. Minus what we call the growth rate. Of course, this is provincial of the same Medina Otani. The O stands for the current market price per share. Current means present value. Present value. Okay. So you should not be labor a lot on this because this is something that is ahead of us. It is something that is ahead of us. But uh, you know, your examiner is quite a bright examiner. Normally, intrinsic value. Thank you very much, Silas. I can see you guys are really. Way ahead. No, really, way ahead. Because of value. Yes. Great. So then what your examiner will do, what I've seen him doing, what I've seen him doing in the past, what I've seen this examiner doing in the past, it's just something that crazy like this. I've seen this examiner doing this in the past. KE is cost of equity. Thanks for asking. Cost of equity. It's cost of equity, K is cost of equity, which will be combined with cost of debt later on to be able to give us what we call WACC, the cost of capital, later on. But that should not really scare you at all because you aren't yet there. I just wanted to connect this uh, with what I'll be doing in future. It's like a bridge, a bridge. For now, what I want you to know is this. If, for example, we have Madame Joanne, Joanne, Joanne's cash flow is cash flow. So we have here 5 million 
then R in this case here is user growth percentage. Then we have growth rate of 2%. Then we are required to determine, to determine uh, Joanne's present value. So for present value. Could you kind of try this out? Could you kind of try this out? You can try this out. So Joanne's cash flows are 5 million. The required rate of return day is 12%. And then they have given us, as an gentleman, a growth rate, which is 2%. So determine the total present value. Determine the total present value. So please remember, for the students who have not yet joined us, you are getting this uh, first lesson. I can call it first lesson, first lesson topic number one from RCM Online College. We expect you guys to join us. This is our number, 0719, And we are quite a wonderful college. We are charging Kenya students 4,200. And please remember that our preview, our preview, our preview is 6242, 839. So number is your name. And you want to make that the payment, ensure that you forward the same payment on WhatsApp through this number, through that number, through that number. And for those of you who insist that they would want uh, physical classes, you will simply need to go to RCM Stand Bank House Fast Flow. RCM Stand Bank House Fast Flow. But uh, physical class are a little bit pricey. Yeah, we charge 9,000 per subject because really our idea is to have all our students being online, students where we are able to record it, it's the way to go. And we see for some reasons, for example, we get some students telling that Molina, I'm coming from Upper Hill, I don't want in this case to go home at five, there's a lot of jam. Then we have a place for you at 9,000 shillings, and we are quite cheap compared to our competitors are also depending on uh, the kind of value we provide. We provide high value, provide high value. Great, so they're getting 51. You see, now you guys are very bright. Even if the examiner never gave us N, if, even if we never gave us N, but you see here we have R and R. And the N has not been deferred. So it behoves of us to come and straight away know that N is what we are. N is infinity, N is infinity. And is infinity. And if that is the case, then I'll be able to bail the car. I will be able to bail the car very easily. I will be able to bail the car very easily. I will come and say my present value will be, of course, the amount of R because of this infinity. And then because of the growth rate, the amount has to grow. And then from this, the moment I will subtract, <laughs> subtract G. So therefore, the present value will be equal to the amount of the time into one plus the growth rate. See the growth rate is two percent. So one point zero two all over R. R is point one two minus the growth rate of zero point zero two. So please move slowly. Give me the numerator. Give me the numerator. Is there somebody who is able to give me the numerator here? Five times one point zero two. What are we getting here? Five times one point zero two, we're getting five point one divided by this minus this gives me point one. I'm so sure somebody like Leshamta who is getting the seat, they must have thought that in the denominator here we have a zero point eight as a formula. No, but I'm joking. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. So the final answer is supposed to be fifty what here is supposed to be fifty one. The final answer is supposed to be. 51, 51, 51. Is that true? Is that true? Is that true? Is that true? 51, 51, 51. Thank you so much. And as a gentleman, I would want to end our today's session at this juncture. It has been a pleasure hosting you tonight. It's my belief that we are getting now to start enjoying our effect, our sessions. Otherwise, from your Mwalimu Dr. Joshua Aura, bye-bye. Thanks.
Pei is asking a lot of the students who are not able to do exams last semester, we have, we have a retake, a retake, retake, you normally save a thousand. So retake fees will be 3,200. Retake fees will be 3,200. Thank you so much, Alexander, it's too early. It's too early. Most of these things will come after results are out. Now I cannot give you an assignment. The only thing I'll do is to send you some video on this on your work. Well, it's too early, Alexander. Thank you very much for your miyoto like me. It's too early. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Thank you for that. Okay, great.